Yeah, no, that'd be fun. All right, so y'all may recognize this from last year. That's what me and Coco was just talking about. I, I used to spend a lot of time out here on my mountain bike and running, and now we just come out here to get ready for our for our out west adventures, I guess, seems like. We're gonna be well protected because Coker's got his bow, he's got a rifle, and we got a pistol. So we're gonna be good. I should have brought, I thought about bringing mine, I really did. It's nice, cool in the shade. Gonna get all this. Right, he's going, so he's getting ready, you, you going, Coker's going on a bear hunt. It's your first time to go bear hunting, isn't it? It is. He's going to have the opportunity to maybe get one with a rifle, but he wants to shoot one with a bow. But he's, they're going to be hunting with dogs. So Did this do good last year when he's on the elk hunt? Yeah. You see where, where all that horse hair? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah Just well, we we had, First afternoon coming coming out of the off the mountain, we had to make a little adjustment because my quiver sitting here and the arrows are there, mm -hmm. and that horse kept bucking. We thought flies were biting him something. My oh, other, the knock! The knock to stick him in the, in the back, mm -hmm. and he didn't like that. Mm -hmm. But um, it um, yeah, work work flawless. Mm -hmm. I mean, you tote your bow like that. Yeah. On the horse back. Sitting good. good. Got it. Got it pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Ready to go. With some, with some meat. Yeah. <laughs> Knoxville Hill Trails. I'm just gonna go right up here and go down this road, and we're gonna hang a right. We'll be on the trails. So we're gonna go right down here. Our plan is to go 30 minutes in, and then turn around and. We'll go in right here and be an hour. So I think we can go about to the that sheep ranch trail, I think. Maybe the log jump is is where I where I where I thought it was. Before we turn around and head out. Pretty, pretty, pretty in here. That's what me and Coker was just talking about. It's really, I mean, it's hot. But when you get in here. In this shade, it's not a, uh, it's not bad at all, really. A little bit of breeze blowing, and everything shaded. There's Coker back there. So if y'all want to look this up, my time we we kind of take it granted for granted because we've been living here all our lives. But this is uh, this is on Choctaw Wildlife Management Area. It ain't 10 miles from our house. And this is the Noxby, N-O-X-U-B-E-E, Noxby Hills Trails. And where we started, kind of where Coker and I parked. And uh, it's a straight shot if you go all the way through to Choctaw Lake. I think it's about 12 miles straight shot if you wanna go that way. And then there's trails within this Main so trail. Main trail. Coker, I'll get behind you. If you go yellow, that goes to the lake. If you go orange, that takes you back to the truck of the main trailhead, which is that Sheep Ranch Road. Coker and I are just gonna stay on this main, on this main trailhead here. But off of this trail, off the main trail, there's a couple of blue diamonds, which Intersect. They intersect back with this main trail and i think there's maybe a double blue diamond so like i said correct me if i'm wrong because i've never actually looked it up because it's just right here here at the house but i think if you're on a mountain bike or hiking like we are super hilly in here i mean really hilly if you're on a mountain bike and i used to mountain bike this a lot it's it's pretty technical I would say lots of stumps, roots, and there a single track. It's all single track, but I think about 17 miles is what you can get. But anyway, we're gonna go 30 minutes out, turn around 30 minutes back. 
and get us about an hour. So lots of different changing terrain in here. I mean, you see the switchback, like we're on this trail. And I mean, it just turns back kind of on the, we're on the side of a big mountain here. And then we're fishing a, about to fall off right here. The only thing about falling off is you got to go up. In this case, we're going to have to go up the other side. And then when we turn around, we'll have to come back up it again. But as you can see, we're just on top of a big ridge right here. Coming around. And you look down there. I mean, it's steep, 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 steep country. Straight down right there. But good turkey hunting in here. Not a lot of deer in here, but some. <laughs> Y'all almost got to see me fall. Uh, did you hear me? Do do me. Is okay? No. But this man is so pretty in here. So pretty. Like I said, as long as you stay yellow and orange, you'd be all right. The way you going. All right, so that's where we just was. Over there. We're on the other side here dark in here going up all right so we climbing up out of here the time we get up out of this bottom it'll be uh be about time to turn around all right, so we got about five more minutes before we turn around here and then I think we'll have been right there at Pigeon Roost, which is about the 1.9. So we've been about two miles, which is about right. It, you know, like when we walk in the morning, we can get, I don't know, 13, 13, 40 a mile walking in here. It takes a little bit, a little bit longer than that, 15 to 17 minutes a mile, but still we'll get two miles and then we'll turn around and go back. And then before we leave to go elk hunting, at least twice, we'll do that 12 mile hike in here. Turn around, come back. There's, there's one of the blue trail markers. We actually kind of got off the main trail, but this just makes a loop and comes back to the main trail, the yellow and orange. But it's, if you ever come out here, it's, it's marked really, really well too. You can't, can't beat it actually, how well it's marked. Errors right there. All right, we at 30. It really don't matter how cold it is as long as it's wet, does it? It's probably gonna be cold when we get back to the truck. Mm. Yeah. Right. You hear that? Mm-hmm. Y'all know those saying if a tree falls in the woods and ain't nobody there, does it make a sound? Does it make a sound, Coker? If ain't nobody there to hear it. I heard that one. <laughs> I heard it too. Well, if I had many, I wouldn't hear it. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let's look at our time. All right, so we had been 1.7, so we liked about two tenths getting to the 1.9. <clears throat> so that's... That's about right, I guess. Like I said, it's just been like, we've been walking for, I don't know, a couple of months off and on in the morning, but it's just different when you get in here on this terrain, roots up and down and around. And we're kind of talking, so uh, we could put our head down and really roll. Anyway, it's just good to get out here the first day we come out here in the boots and getting ready. Big spruce tree. About 20 foot tall, real bushy at the bottom, and that elk bugled up there on the side of the mountain about 100 yards. And it wasn't just a second I seen him coming down that mountain, but before all that, there were two ways he could really go. Right. To my left was I'd range at 40, so I slid my sight to 40, and if he come right, he'd be at 20. So when he committed, he was coming. So what'd you set your sight at? 40. Because that was going to be my first 
further shot. Right. But spruce tree and I slid it down to 20. You know, I had time to do it. And he was, when he got to 40 yards, he was a, not a run, but he was a good steady walk. I drew it. He probably 40, 45 yards. Whenever you drew? Yeah, but I was standing behind that tree. And I, once I drew, I stepped out. And he come about 18 steps. And I shot him. Well, that's, that's the only thing about, that's what worried me about going from five pin to single pin. It's just, I just would have to be mindful. Yeah, left here. That's the, that's where we got off right there. Yeah. It's just being mindful of, hey, with that single pin, you always got to remember to move it, move it, move it. Because yeah. I've always been used to shooting a five pin, you know, counting pins and shooting the gap. And one thing I, I did do with that sight, I found one position I could shoot from 20 to 40. I got you. And and still kill an elk. And still kill Maybe a, not kill a white tail, but kill an elk. Right. Uh, this way. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's where that sign is. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. But, you know, I, I practiced that. You know, I knew it shooting an 18 inch block target at 40 yards, sitting at, I had that one pin sight set at 33. And I can shoot it from 20 to 40. Right. But I knew I need to hold about six inches high at 40. So we're walking along here and we find a persimmon. I don't see. That's a persimmon right there. That's it. Yeah, with yep. the tag on it. Uh-huh, with the tag on yeah. it. Huh. I need to remember that, Mark. Yeah. Kill a deer under that dude. All right, so you can see us taking these short, choppy steps. Going up, up, up. So... We're climbing back out of here. Orange is back to the truck, so we headed out of here. Sweating. All right, so it's getting getting dark in here. A lot of y'all probably wasn't following the channel last year because I'd really just got started. So this year, I got about three thousand more of you than I did this time last year. And kind of i mean i always try to stay in decent shape coker's my next door neighbor and he's always a hunting but it's fun to come out here i tell people especially if you're going off like coker's going on a bear hunt we're going on our elk hunt for our 27th year if you wait to a couple of weeks before time to go especially a flatlander like we are and you going out west you're not going to have a good time because you're not going to be in shape and you're not going to be prepared. So that's one reason I do it. The second reason I start doing this, and we're two months out from our hunt, but me and Coker's been taught, he killed a nice, fine bull last year. Me and Dad both killed bulls. Y'all can go back and see that on, on our last September videos. But we start doing this, and our hunting trip lasts for two months, you know, already shooting bows, Coker's packing with his rifle he's gonna take and his bow. Uh, we'll start shooting and it just, it makes your trip last so much longer if you'll start doing this now. And if you got a buddy, I'm fortunate to have Coker. Of course I got dad, but dad's not able to come, come and do all this. So I challenge you to uh, if you're going or even 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 deer hunting even before deer season get out and start doing a little bit makes you feel a lot better all right we made it didn't we mm -hmm. made it back so appreciate hope y'all like this we're gonna try to do this four or five more times so it'll be uh it'll be fun so god bless jesus saves see y'all tomorrow ftf